Mother's Day. How many of you have mothers? Okay, all hands should go up. Uh, uh, I want to welcome my mom is here, so I want to give her a special welcome. I have some other guests from Michigan who I'm going to officially welcome a little bit later, uh, but it's good to have you here uh, with us today. Um, welcome to all of our guests, and if, if this is your first time or if you've been coming for a few weeks, I um, really appreciate the fact that you are worshiping with us. I look forward to getting to know you. There is a guest card in the pew, and if you will fill that out and leave it in the offering or just leave it on the pew, that will help me learn, uh, learn your name and begin the process of getting acquainted. But we are really uh, honored that you are here with us today. I want to thank, I have a couple of announcements I need to make before our service officially starts. I want to thank everyone in involved in last weekend's garage sale. And where is, where's Rick? They're right smack dab in the middle. Uh, the garage sale was Rick Sanders' idea. He was the force behind it, put in a ton of hours. Uh, Eva was right there by his side. But it took a, took a lot of man and woman power to, to pull that off. It was a big success. Um, it made about $2,000 for the, for the church, so it was successful in that way. But mostly, it was successful in allowing us to meet a lot of our neighbors. So that would not have happened without all of the uh, volunteer efforts. Let's thank those who were involved in the garage. Uh, next Sunday at 2 o'clock, we have been invited to Masjid El Medina. This is a response to the service where our friends from the mosque uh, came here uh, and took in our morning worship service. And we've been invited to go and to help them pack care packages. And they're, they're going to do about 400 packages that will be distributed through um, the Springfield Soup Kitchen. And this is an ongoing effort on the part of our church and the mosque to build intentional friendships between both groups. Even though there, there are major differences in our faith, um, Jesus calls us to love our neighbors. And one of our themes has been we cannot love our neighbors if we do not know our neighbors. So that is uh, next Sunday, 2 o'clock, and there's a sign-up sheet on the welcome desk. If you would let us know that you're coming, that would help me out a lot. So if you could sign up there, that would be, that would be good. We have a number of other things coming up in the next couple of weeks. On the 26th, we're going to be doing some baby dedications. So if you have a, a, a baby or a child that you would like to dedicate and have not yet signed up, uh, sign up on the welcome sheet and we would love to include you on that day. On juice, June 2nd, we are doing a day, uh, a program called Pizza Pop and Pastor. So immediately after the service, for anyone who has been visiting Central lately, whether you've been visiting for a couple of weeks or for several months, it's just just a time to, to become acquainted. It's right after the service, and you can sign up at the welcome desk, and it's a chance to get to know one another a little bit better, and would love to have you participate in that. Lots of good stuff happening, uh, some bad stuff happening. The Gunnans, our good friend uh, Rob and Carol, are moving to Cal... Now, that's good for you, but it's bad for us. Uh, so they are moving. They're actually moving on Monday. So their plans to move came together very quickly. Just learned that last week. So we're very happy for you, but we will miss you. Uh, so let's, let's express our appreciation to Rob and Carol. And Is that your truck parked out back of the church? Oh, I thought it might be. So we'll pray for safe travels too. But uh, make sure and uh, say goodbye after the service to Rob and Carol. I'm a, uh, I'm a blessed man. I'm blessed because I am married to a good mom. I am blessed because I grew up with a good mom. And I am the father to a good mom. I work with good moms, and I pastor good moms. So I am uh, especially blessed this morning as I think about Mother's Day. I've um, been reflecting on my own mom uh, some this, this week and things that I appreciate. A couple things that I remember from my childhood. One is I remember before school we would sit at the kitchen table and she, we would read scripture together and, and pray together. And that had a huge impact on me as a, as a child, uh, really preparing me for even the work that I'm, I'm doing today. Another thing that I remember about my mom is uh, once a month, uh, we would prepare, she'd prepare a big meal and take it to a rescue mission in Pontiac, Michigan. Uh, my dad would preach and she would cook, um, but, but being at the rescue mission in Pontiac really shaped my understanding of ministry and what the church ought to be doing. So I thank my mom for, uh, for both. 
both of those things. I'm extra blessed today because I have a guest with us who was like my second mom. She is my other mother of a different color, Maddie Melton right down here in the front. Um, Maddie and my parents worked for the uh, same person, a uh, very generous family up in Detroit. My parents took care of the farm during the summer. They, the, the frost would come out, and Maddie uh, took care of their children and basically took care of them and their lives and uh, grew up with Maddie always in the background, often at our home. Uh, Kim and Amy are like sisters to me, and it is just a real honor to, to have you here. And, and Maddie's influence has um, had a huge impact on me in the way that I view community and what the church ought to do. And I, t I told her, um, we, were, we were visiting yesterday, and I think she, meant, you mentioned, she mentioned, someone mentioned the NAACP, and I was very happy to be able to tell her that I'm a card-carrying member of the uh, Springfield chapter of the NAACP, and, and Maddie's just been, uh, been a wonderful influence on my life. Here's a big idea for today's message. Godly moms are pictures of God. In fact, the scriptures use mothers several times as examples to help us understand the nature of God. There are things about God that we can't fully grasp until we compare them to what a godly mom looks like. Today I want to talk about four specific characteristics of godly moms, and each one of these are examples where the, the scripture uses mothers to personify what our God is like. First, first thing, God Godly moms protect their children. There are two passages listed in the, uh, in the bulletin there, and both of them talk about mother birds. They use a mother eagle and a mother hen as examples of the protective nature of a godly mom. So you picture an eagle up in the nest, and the, and the, the eaglets are walking around the edge and about to fall off, and she uses her wings to, to protect them because she's concerned about their welfare. She's anticipating all of the things that could go wrong, and that's what godly moms do, right? Um, you're, always, you're always seeing the things that, that could go wrong, and a lot of times dads don't always see things the same way. Um, but godly moms uh, are protective of their families, and they are examples of God's protection over us. God is like a mother eagle or a mother hen uh, caring for us as an eagle cares for eaglets or a hen cares for chicks, but protecting us from all of the things that could go wrong. Second, godly moms also comfort their children. I'm going to read a passage from Isaiah. This is Isaiah 66, 13. And he tells us that God comforts his children like a mother comforts her child. Uh, the passage reads, as a mother comforts her child, so I will comfort you. When, when children are hurt or discouraged, moms and dads respond differently. Dads take a quick look, make sure there isn't profuse bleeding, and then say everything's going to be okay and, and go back to what they were doing. So that, that attention span of a dad is sometimes short. Uh, but, but godly moms are, sp are uh, particularly gifted at comforting their children. And when a godly mom comforts her children, she is providing a picture of God's comfort for us. God cares about us like a godly mom cares about and watches over and comforts her children. Third, uh, godly moms are attentive to their children's needs. And God gave three, in Scripture, God gave three very clear examples of mothers that help us understand the attentive nature of, of God, that he is paying attention to what's happening in our lives. Whatever is happening in your life right now, God is paying attention. He is aware of what's going on, and he is available to give comfort and to give protection. But there's some specific examples that I, I think are, are helpful in understanding the attentive nature of God. First, uh, God is attentive like a nursing mom. Isaiah 49, 15 reads like this, Shout for joy, you heavens. Rejoice, you earth. Burst into song, you mountains. For the Lord comforts his people. And I will have compassion uh, on my afflicted ones. But the people of Israel said, Lord, the Lord has forsaken me. The Lord has forgotten me. 
Can a mother forget the baby at her breast and have no compassion on the child she has born? Though she may forget, I will not forget you. So God uses the example of a nursing mom. How likely is it for, that a nursing mom will forget that she has a child? Uh, not very likely uh, while she's nursing the baby. And that's a picture of how unlikely it is that God will forget us, that God is not paying attention to what's happening in our, in our lives. <clears throat> Another example is that God pays attention to our needs like an attentive midwife. And there are a number of passages, two in the Psalms and one in Isaiah. So imagine what a really good midwife is like. Now our family, our, our social schedule revolves around Sunday nights at 8 o'clock on Channel 16 when Call of the Midwife comes on. I don't know if there are any other Call of the Midwife addicts here, but that's, that's our whole TV schedule revolves around that show. And the midwives provide great examples, again, of how attentive God is. They're, they're always watching for anything that could go wrong. Any need that could come up, they're quick to respond. And God is like that. Psalm 22 says, You brought me out of the womb. You made me trust you. Even at my mother's breast, from birth I was cast on you. From my mother's womb, you have been my God. Do not be far from me. For trouble is near and there is no one else to help. Then the third example of, of God's attentiveness is, uh, and I think this is perhaps the most powerful. God is attentive, attentive to us like a mother who is about to give birth. So how, how likely is it that God is going to forget us? As likely as a mother go, is going to go into labor and then forget to have her baby. It's not very likely, is it? There's a way that that, that stays at the forefront of their, of their minds. Um, Isaiah 66, 9 says, do I, do I bring you to the moment of birth and not give delivery, says the Lord? Um, God is less likely to uh, forget to fulfill his plan for us and to forget to bless us than a mom is likely to come to that very moment of birth and then just forget to follow through from that point on. It's absurd, isn't it? There's, there's no way that would ever has an absurd picture to help us understand just how deeply God is paying attention to all that goes on in, in our lives. Then I have one more example, uh, one more point where godly moms, uh, an example of godly character in a mom that is also a picture of how God interacts with us. This is the fourth point in your outline. Godly moms help people find Jesus. Godly moms help people find Jesus. I'm going to read a passage from the chat from Luke chapter 15, and and I have um, pastors are allowed to to use their imagination just a little bit when they need to stretch a passage to, to fit a point. I've done that just a tad. There's it's talking about a mother, and I'm just assuming talking about a woman. I'm assuming the woman is a mother, so a little bit of a jump there. Um, Luke chapter 15 verses 8 through 10. Or suppose a woman has 10 silver coins and she loses one. Does, doesn't she light a lamp and sweep the house and search carefully until she finds it? And when she finds it, she calls her friends and neighbors together and says, Rejoice with me. I have found my lost coin. In the same way I tell you, there is rejoicing in the presence of the angels over one sinner who repents. Godly moms are especially attentive <coughs> to the need for Christ in people's lives. And they're always doing things behind the scenes and caring for people and loving on people in ways that draw people to Jesus Christ. Today, I want to introduce you to one of our moms who is, is rearranging her life out of a desire to help draw people to Jesus Christ. Mandy, come on up. I told Mandy not to scoot the, the, uh, the stool back or we'll have a really exciting service here. Um, <clears throat> But happy Mother's Day. Thanks. 
Uh, Mandy, tell me a little bit about the, the ministry that you're starting. Um, yeah, so we are starting a ministry called Young Lives here in Clark County, and it is an, um, an offshoot of Young Life, which is a ministry that um, Central has supported in the past. And Young Lives is designed specifically um, to love on and care for teen moms and their babies. So when you're talking about introducing moms to Jesus, um, we're specifically looking at these teen moms and wanting to introduce them no, to the no, unconditional no, 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 love. Your family, because your family is going to be real involved in this with you. So introduce. Yeah. Um, so my husband's name is Danny. We have a 10-month-old um, named Evelyn. And um, we, uh, shortly after we moved back to Springfield, um, I joined our Young Life Committee, and then um, we got pregnant shortly after that. And um, through my work with uh, the Young Life Committee, I helped plan an interest meeting about Young Lives, because Young Lives doesn't exist yet in Clark County, um, but it's something that our area directors for Young Life have been praying about and wanting to start. So we just gathered some people together into a room so that we could pray and drink dream about what it might look like to start Young Lives. And um, during that meeting, it became very clear that through some partnerships that God has provided um, with the Pregnancy Resource Clinic and with the grads program here in Clark County, we have access to these teen moms who need Jesus. And then we also um, had women in that room who want to invest in teen moms. So what became very clear is that we just need someone to come in and help make it happen. So I left that meeting and went home and and um, Danny and I started praying about whether or not um, that might be a role that I could step into. And um, God was very kind. And every time we were kind of like, oh, I don't know, um, he delivered some affirmation that, yes, this is what is next for us and for our family. Um, and we're excited um, to step into this together as a family. Um, I'm, my hope is that Evelyn will just grow up being friends with these um kids of these teen moms that she'll grow up seeing um, that we love God and we love people and one of the ways we love people is by loving on these teen moms and their little ones. Um, so we're excited to do this kind of as a family effort not just um, me going out to do this new thing. So y'all have to listen really carefully because um, Mandy's talking about there's Young Life which is a program that we have supported for a long time and then Young Lives is a new program and that's, that's what Mandy's going to be involved with. Um, tell what were you doing before before um, before you were called to this ministry? What was your life like? What do you and Danny do? Um, Danny's a professor at Wittenberg. He teaches um, chemistry, so I don't understand much of what he teaches, but he's very good at it. Um, and then uh, I taught kindergarten um, prior to us moving back to Springfield, and then since we've been here, I've been teaching at Nightingale Montessori. Um, I was full time last year and part time this year, um, so that I could spend more time with Evelyn. Um, but yeah. So really, getting to this ministry was uh, uh, the the, the um, result of of hearing about a program, um, having a little bit of curiosity about it, mm -hmm. uh, praying about. I mean, this is a ministry that kind of found you. You weren't you weren't you had a stable right. uh, career. Everything was, and uh, you. Uh, felt God calling you to something very different. Yeah, and now that I am a mom myself, um, I can say that being a mom's the hardest thing I've ever done, and I'm sure many of you seasoned moms are thinking like, oh honey, you're just getting started. Like, <laughs> um, But it is. It's, it's one of the best things I've ever done, but it's also one of the hardest things, and so as I've learned about these teen moms, just thinking about the fact that they are doing this mothering thing without having the majority of the resources and the supports that I have. Um, um, and many of them are quite isolated. You know, they're not living the life that their peers are living because they have a baby to take care of. Um, but they're also not having mommy, you know, teen mom plague dates where they're getting to be in community with other teen moms. So um, my heart for these teen moms has just really grown as I've learned about um, kind of what they're facing and have also experienced motherhood myself um, for the first time. So, tell me, say a little bit just about Young Life. Mm -hmm. And what is the mission of Young Life? A lot of people are familiar with it. Sure. Um, 
one of the things I like about it is the emphasis on evangelism. But just talk a little bit about what Young Life is, because some people might not know that. Yeah, so Young Life, their goal is to introduce all adolescents to Jesus Christ and then help them grow in their faith. Um, and that's done primarily through college leaders who go out into the high schools and middle schools and uh, form relationships with students and then um, point them to Jesus. So it's a very relational ministry, um, and it's something that uh, is done mostly with college leaders as the as the force behind it. So Young Life, Young Life is focused on all the adolescents in Clark County, mm -hmm. expressing the gospel to them. It's an amazing program, mm -hmm. um, one we're really, really happy to support. Young Lives is, is different, and the focus is on, on teen moms. Um, and by the way, I'm, I'm really excited as a church about walking through this with you. Part, part of our uh, philosophy as a church is to get behind members who are, doing, who are doing great things. And I was thrilled when I heard that, that you were looking at this position. And I'm, I'm really anxious to find ways that we can partner with you mm -hmm. um, financially, providing volunteers. Um, I'm really excited about this. Why, why is this ministry needed in Clark County? Yeah, so if you look up at the screen, um, this is a map of Ohio, and it shows the uh, rate of pregnancy for women um, ages 15 to 19. And then there's a key at the bottom, so the darker the color, the higher the rate. And if you find Clark County over on the, I guess it would be your left, um, you can see it's pretty dark in color. Um, and when I looked at the numbers of the 88 counties in Clark County, there's only 10 that have higher rates of teen pregnancy um, than Clark County. So we, we certainly have um, a need for this ministry here. And I mentioned earlier the grads program, which is a program that's in all of the high schools in Clark County. And it's just designed for moms who are pregnant or who have had babies. And their goal is to help them graduate from high school. There are currently 65 moms who are enrolled in the grads program in Clark County. So that's 65 moms who would be eligible to come to Young Lives and to hear about Jesus um, in that setting. And I've had the opportunity to talk with um, um, the one of the gals who works for the grads program and she just expressed how much she wishes that she could give these girls more than she's able to through the government funded program that she works for um, and so she is so excited to be able to point these girls to young lives and say here's someone else that can help you and can support you and can do more for you um, so that partnership I think is going to be really powerful to help us find these girls and, and love on them I was um, I'm involved in a a, a mentoring program at Springfield High School where I go once a month and meet with a handful of students and, and talk to them. And we, we were talking about uh, how important it is to graduate from high school. And I was, I was digging for some statistics to talk to them about that. And I, one that I found was that 50% of teen moms are never able to graduate from, from high school. And 30% uh, um, uh, of those, of teen moms, uh, end up spending their entire life in poverty. So, so ministering to people at this moment has an impact for decades, a uh, hu huge impact, um, not only on families, but on, on our broader community here in Clark County. And you're going to be working, you'll be working with the schools, you're going to be working with a pregnancy resource uh, clinic, another ministry that we work with. Um, t tell me a little bit about what you actually will be doing with the, what's the program look like? Sure. So it's built off of mentorship. That's where the, the power comes through. Um, and like I mentioned before, it, with Young Life, you use college students. College students don't have a lot of empathy for teen moms. So um, we, our mentors are going to be young women or uh, moms or even grandmas, um, people who want to come alongside these teen moms and really kind of live life with them. Um, we will do weekly events. And at those weekly events, we'll provide child care and dinner to kind of care fully for the whole family. Um, but then mentors also are just kind of living life with these moms. They might be picking a mom and baby up and taking them to a doctor's appointment or meeting them up at the park and, and having a little play date. Um, so mentors really are um, just coming alongside and and helping these women, um, these young moms, to see, you know, what does it even look like to, to love? on um, a baby. And our goal is certainly to impact the mom and impact her mothering, but the first and foremost thing that we want to do is to help um, these moms know and understand the unconditional love of Jesus. So that's where all of our programming is going to come from. 
So I'm, I'm going to stop right there for just a moment. Um, our, our lives were changed dramatically. I remember Mother's Day uh, 20 years ago. Uh, uh, probably 21, 22 years ago, where we had a person talk about a, a ministry that they've been involved in, and it was a ministry of adoption. So a person, just like Mandy, came up, gave a testimony, and talked about adopting a child from China. And that's what set us on the, the path uh, to consider an inter international adoption. And that's uh, how Leah became part of our family. And just an amazing blessing, amazing turning point all as the result of hearing a kind of a testimony like this. So I hope that this, I hope this presentation has the same kind of impact, that this will do something in, in someone's heart who's here today who will say, I want to do that. That's, I, I think that's how God works, is he, he, he says, I want you involved in this. So would you accept mentors from this church? Absolutely. I thought that was going to be the answer. Yes. <laughs> so I, I hope that some of you are thinking that way as you're listening to this, thinking, man, I, that is something I could do and that I would, uh, would like to do. Uh, so we have a video now, so I'm going to ask uh, uh, Chris and uh, this crew up in the balcony to go ahead and run the video, and then we're going to talk a little bit more about this ministry. I was 15 when I first got pregnant. I thought it was going to be like me and my boyfriend, we have our baby now, we're going to be together forever. And then after a few months, I realized that none of that was going to come true. When I got pregnant, I was a sophomore. I thought my life was over. As a kid, I moved around a lot, but then I hit high school. Not thinking of my actions, I got pregnant. That's when I had a reality check. Teen pregnancy crosses all boundaries. It's in all of our communities. It's in all of our neighborhoods. Teen moms are probably some of the most isolated and overlooked people in our society. Their greatest need is having someone that loves them and values them. I needed help, someone to guide me and tell me not to give up because I was pregnant. And then I found Young Lives. Young Lives is Young Lives Ministry to Teen Moms. We get to be the voice that reminds them that they have value and that their children have value. We love teen moms. We want to establish a relationship with them. We want to make a difference in their lives as they are mentored by a, another woman who really loves on them as well. Mentoring really is the heartbeat of Young Lives. I care so much about these teen moms and I cannot go a day without being around them because every day I see a miracle. Tiffany definitely gave me a lot of hope. She shows me what I'm worth. She just makes me feel good about myself. As the mentors build relationships with teen moms, then they invite them to Young Lives Club. For that hour, they can have fun, they can sing, they can learn, and somebody's taking care of their baby. I felt accepted. I felt it was okay that I was going to be okay, that this man, Jesus, he loves me. Sorry. That Jesus loved me no matter what, no matter my past, no matter what I was doing. I feel good when I'm out the house and I'm with other mothers. It feels good, like, okay, good, I'm not the only with the baby. I'm not the only one going through this. We have the opportunity to take girls to Young Lives Camp, a traditional camp that high school kids would go to. We turn it into a week for teen moms and their babies. To come to a beautiful camp and hear the truth about Jesus and his love for them and also experience adventure and build new relationships. I made a decision to follow Christ when I went to camp. I think it was the right decision because I want to have a good relationship with God and for my son to have one too. I told God, you know what God, I need you in my life. I need you in my daughter's life. Since I've accepted God into my life, my heart is at peace. Life isn't easier, but I'm not alone. When a girl understands just how much Jesus loves her and her baby, it is an indescribable feeling of joy. All that they've heard from their family, from their baby's father, from their friends about being worthless and being a mistake, when they know that that is not true and that there's a God who loves them and who cares for them and their child, it's cause for great celebration. I didn't have any hope for the future, really. I didn't feel like I wanted to do anything in my life. But now, I was on honorable last year, and I was never on honorable before. So I really feel like 
God gave me them to push me forward. They came and helped me a lot, made me realize that there's still hope. I told my daughter, Amaya, look Amaya, this is our new life. No more the struggle, no more anger. It's going to be me and you and God, and we're going to make it through. So many, um, what, one, thing, one thing that I thought was really neat about this program, I love the idea of the camp. And I think of all of the things that a teen mom misses out on, and that they have actually designed a camp program around the moms and their babies. I think that's really, that's really great. Um, what are some of the other needs that perhaps church could help with? Yeah, so as we mentioned before, we'll need mentors, women who want to invest in these moms. Um, because we provide dinner and child care at our weekly events, we're, we'll need um, people to provide food and to also provide child care at those events. Um, and then probably the most important would just be prayer. Um, we're starting something brand new, um, and covering that in prayer um, is probably the most important thing that um, could be done. So um, Pastor Carl is going to talk about if you're interested in coming alongside us, um, what that might look like. Yeah, there's a, there is a uh, response card um, in, the, in the bulletin. If any of you are interested in supporting uh, Mandy's ministry, you can fill that out and just leave it in your pew or put it at the welcome desk or bring it back uh, next week and we will collect these and, and get those to Young Life. And you mentioned that, uh, there are lots of ways that people can give. One-time gifts are really helpful, but monthly, in terms of stability for the ministry, monthly support's important. And Mandy went from having a job... Um, where her salary was provided and didn't have to worry things like that to having to raise money for the ministry. So that, that's the thing that would scare a lot of people away. Um, so I appreciate your, your courage in, in doing that. She, uh, the ministry is going to cost about $30,000 a year. Mandy's responsible for raising $20,000 of that. So we want to get behind her in, in any way that we can. And I have a check for uh, $250 for you. And there's another 500 coming, and then we are going to get behind you for $1,000 a year from this point out, and hopefully Thank more than you. that someday, yeah. um, because we want to be among the first to say this is a ministry we believe in, uh, we believe in, in you, and uh, we are excited about what this ministry can accomplish here in Clark County. So, Thank let's, you so much. Let's express our appreciation to Mandy and, for Dan, and to Danny for taking on this ministry. I thought there was no better way to, to celebrate Mother's Day than to talk about a way that, that we can support support moms. So thank you for, uh, for being with us today and sharing that story, and, and I'm excited to see where this, this goes. Praise Band is going to uh, close our service in song. Uh, we have some kids who have flowers uh, for the women who are here. They'll be handing them out as, as you leave, so grab a flower. Uh, have a wonderful Mother's Day, and uh, it's just an honor for us to have all of you with us and a special thanks to all of our, let's give a thanks to all of our moms you have a friend in Jesus cares about what's happening in your life just like an attentive mom thank you so much for being here uh, wonderful to have you worship with, worshiping with us this morning uh, go in peace have a wonderful afternoon with your with your families please remember Mandy is going to be in the back if you'd like to talk to Mandy about young lives she has some brochures that she can hand out she'd love to tell you more uh, about that also if you're planning on going to the mosque on the 19th make sure and sign up so we know who's coming for that event that's at two o'clock uh, next Sunday and would love to have you participate let me close with prayer father uh, thank you for this moment father I thank you for the moms who are here and um, thank you for all that they have done to um, get us to where we are in life. Lord, I also lift up those for whom Mother's Day is hard. And I know that for some it, it brings uh, difficult memories and uh, painful emotions. And uh, Father, we thank you that you are an attentive God who meets us where we are. Um, and loves us like the best of parents. And Father, go with us. I pray that your power would work in us. Make us more like Jesus. Help us to advance your kingdom. Help us to make Springfield and Clark County uh, look more like heaven. And we just want to thank you for the privilege it's been to worship you together this morning. In Christ, our Savior's name, amen.